Okay, we're gonna go through the correct procedure to assemble an excitation system for a reversible Wacker Noisen plate. This is a 2540 plate. Our main components are our tripping pin, our helix gear assembly, our main driven shaft, and our piston shaft assembly. If this is assembled incorrectly, the plate, when you move the handle forward, will go in reverse, and if you move the handle in reverse, it will go forward. So it's vital to get this correct, otherwise you will be dismantling the plate to time it correctly. To assemble this, you slip this unit into the driven shaft and drop the pin through. Okay, we're gonna to continue to assemble the shaft into the helix for the correct timing. We have the tripping pin, we set the shaft in and we turn the driven shaft in. The correct timing for this system is the exciter weight holes or bolt holes should line up with the timing mark and the piston assembly fully extended. If this is incorrectly timed, the piston will be all the way in. The hole will still line up with the timing mark, but this is not the correct timing. The piston has to be all the way extended out. When we have this assembly, completely set for the timing position, we need to install this bush. There's one on either side, only one has to be removed for disassembly. We then install this bushing, go over to a press and press this bushing in. Once we've installed the bushing, the shaft cannot come off and we can recheck our timing, our pistons all the way out and our exciter bolt hole lines up with our timing mark. Our next part of this assembly procedure we need to install these washers. There are two of them. One on the piston side and one on the shaft driven side. Then we can install our inner bearing races. One on the piston side and one on the driven side. This whole assembly can be taken over to a press to press these inner bearings on. Now we have the inner races pressed on our driven shaft. Our bearing. Check it on either end. So this assembly now is ready to install in the exciter housing. Okay, now we're ready to install the driven shaft into the excitation housing. So basically it makes it easier if you've got the piston all the way in, you can sit this unit down, slide the shaft and it will drop into the housing. Okay. Once we've installed the shaft, we have our timing marks. 
the timing marks have to be lined up. We install, once our timing marks are in a line, we install the bearings on both sides of the driven shaft and ideally press them in so they are flush with the exciter housing. These need to be set correctly so we obtain end float on the shaft. Okay, once we have the bearings installed flush with the housing, we want to install the plate. The plate has a step. So when it is pulled in, it will push the bearing in to the correct depth or location in the housing. The reason for that is, is when this is assembled, we want end float on these shafts. We do not want the shafts tight against the bearings. Okay, once we have the plate installed with silicon on the back, then we can install the piston. The retaining clip clips onto the back of the piston to hold it in place. Then we can install our piston housing, install the bolts, normally a little coating of oil on the piston, and basically we can install the plate assembly, the piston assembly. Now it's time to install the belt guard, lower belt guard. We have a seal, should be replaced when this is rebuilt. We can coat this with our silicone sealant and we can install this and torque the bolts to the recommended torque. Okay, once we have this whole assembly completed, end caps on, our end float, then we need to put this back on our base plate. Do not over silicone the surface. This is a machined surface, and it's a machined surface on the base plate. Very fine smear of silicone. Biggest problem we have, too much silicone is implied, it gets down to the bolt holes, and when these are torqued, you get a false torque because you've got silicone underneath it. Once that is on the base plate, obviously you install your belt. You connect your hose off your handle. You fill the handle up full of oil to the recommended mark, move the handle back and forth, start the machine. There is no reason to bleed the system. If the oil's up to the level, then check it again after you've run it for a few minutes with moving the handle back and forth, and then your machine will move correctly forward and correctly back.